We're back at St. Anselm College here in Manchester, New Hampshire. And let us check in now with Fox News correspondent Major Garrett, who has been covering the Democratic race very heated at this time. Major? Good evening, Britt. As we all know, change is in the air, and Hillary Clinton has brought about change here just a couple of days before the New Hampshire primary, changing the entire trajectory of her campaign, which was once rooted in a positive expression of her experience and preparedness for the White House. Today, it became a campaign rooted in the negativity about Barack Obama's unfitness for the job because Hillary Clinton told Fox in an interview he simply not credible enough as a change agent. He's likable, but she said, you know, likability attracted a lot of votes in 2000 for George Bush. Let's take a quick listen. You know, in 2000, a lot of voters sort of had a leap of faith with George W. Bush. You know, he was going to be a uniter, not a divider. And um, he was a guy you wanted to have a beer with. Well, I think that this election has really focused people's attention on the importance of who's in that Oval Office and the decisions that have to be made. Clinton also said that there's an inconsistency in Barack Obama's rhetoric now and his record in the past. And she said he's not as clear on the Iraq war, opposing it in 2002, but saying in 2004 he wasn't sure how he would have voted on it. She said that kind of conversation is one New Hampshire voters need to hear. Senator Obama said that records matter. I believe that. Two weeks ago, he said that John Edwards was not electable because he changed positions between 2004 and 2008. Senator Obama changed positions between 2004 and 2007. So let's just have a really full airing of each of us because we don't want to raise false hopes. We want to raise hopes rooted in reality. The Obama campaign's reaction to this is, if Hillary Clinton wants to tell people who are feeling hopeful for the first time, or the first time in a long time about American politics, that they shouldn't be hopeful, they're just as fine with that, because they believe the people who are hopeful know why they're hopeful and will not take Hillary Clinton's advice that they shouldn't be. Britt? Major, thank you very much. Back here now with the All-Star panel. Let's talk about that race for a moment here. Um, you know, the two candidates came in here needing to shake this race up in New Hampshire. One of them, of course, was Mitt Romney, uh, but the other, most con and more conspicuously, was Hillary Clinton. Has anything that we've seen happen here, particularly the, the single debate, the single Democratic debate performance that she put on, done anything to change the dynamic of this race, which seems so to be favoring Obama, who is now mm. ahead in some polls as many as, as much as 10 points, yeah. 12, 10, 12 13 points. Um, I don't think so. I mean, Hillary Clinton, you're right, had, had to change the dynamic here, and what she's decided to do was to sort of repeat what uh, Walter Mondale did back in 1984 with Gary Hart, and that's to say, where's the beef? I mean, you've got you've got a great act going here, uh, raising issues of hope and um, aspiration and working together and stuff like that. And she's saying, change, yeah, yeah, change. She, she's saying that uh, that 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 you need somebody who can who can actually deliver it. And she's raising questions also about whether Obama is the real deal, um, you know. And and I I find some of these. Uh, I mean, he look, he did make a speech in 2002 against the Iraq war. And then she's saying, well, then he voted to support the troops. Well, I would hope so, um, uh, because after all, the troops were in the field fighting and dying. Right. And I don't think that that's a flip-flop, as she's alleging. So has she made any headway or not? I don't think so. Okay, Bill? I think Hillary Clinton's new strategy seems to be, she's really going to be a sourpuss. You know, <laughs> she's just, people are cheered up. There, There's an interesting race, attractive candidates, and she's just going to go hold around. Hold on now. Yeah, hold on. Don't be at all happy or cheerful. Don't think you have a good choice among candidates. He can't deliver on anything. Who? I mean, who's he? What kind of? It's, I think she, it's ridiculous. Actually. Well, what would, yeah, but what what options does she have? She has to try to take this guy down a peg, doesn't she? I guess. I mean, she might have given some thought to you know developing her own agenda and instead of just saying that she's the inevitable nominee, explaining why she what she would do for the country that well, Barack has, Obama she's had a would long do. Of positions and issues that she talks about all the time and at length. It didn't work apparently in Iowa anyway. Well, I guess not. Maybe people just don't want to be don't want to vote for. I think, you know, the, the problem is, and you see both of them at a, at a rallies, as I did today, and they sound very similar when it comes to policy positions, even you know, the war. They both talk about ending the war. I mean, it, doesn't, it doesn't go back to what their various votes were. So what she's done is she's trying to say he's lacking substance. This is poetry versus prose. You know, we don't just need some nice talking, magical talking politician. We know somebody who knows how to get things done. And at her rally today, she not only spent 10 minutes attacking him, she, her 
signs don't say change now, they say ready, meaning she's ready yeah, to get in. Yeah. yeah, ready, yeah. Yeah, I'm ready to get in too here. The, uh, <laughs> Quickly. You know, look, it's, it's too late for Hillary. The uh, Obama's magic train has left the station and she's not going to catch it. Normally, if you have a, a Democrat who is faced with a tough front runner, how does that Democrat prevail? Has more money and can get the African American vote. He has more money and the African Americans are going to vote for him, not for her. Thank you, panel. Coming up, we'll talk with the former moderator, Chris Wallace. Stay with us.